Oh, All right. Okay. Okay. Well, go. I will just kick us off then because I was just about to share a tip. And for any of you watching the recording, it is hopefully helpful for you. So mm -hmm. welcome to the call tonight. We're so excited to see so many of you on live. And for those of you catching the recording, thank you for taking some time. Um, so my first tip real quick before we launch into all of it is um, we've been talking a lot about working in the pockets of your day. If you don't have like a chunk of time where you can do this business and really like who does, right? Um, so I've been planning out my evening post midday in the little sliver of time that I have where all my kiddos are occupied and it's a very small sliver. And that's one of the things that I've been making a priority in that time slot because a lot of doing this in the cracks of your day needs to be well thought out and not stressful. So one thing that I kept leaving until time to post was whatever I wanted to talk about that night. And I would have it in my head, but then between dinner and bath time and bedtime, it would be late by the time I actually got it up. And I'm just out of gas at the end of the night. So to be creative and like actually get down what I had in my head throughout the day never happened. So I've started writing that post midday and it has really been helping my mind space. I feel like I've been saying more clearly what I want to say in the post. So think about these things in your day um, when you can fit in those things where you need more of that brain power. Um, and the thing that I've been leaving more so for the end of the day is checking into the challenge groups because that brings me a lot of joy. That's something I can do a little bit on autopilot as I read everything and comment. I'm not leaving the stuff that takes creativity or a lot of thought for the end of the day when it comes to this business. I also think that it takes you away from being on your phone in the hours that your family needs you present most also. So then you're not sitting there like trying to come up with something. It's already in your phone. You just copy paste, post your photo and away you go. Even planning the photo, which is part of what we're going to talk about tonight. So Kim, I don't know if you want to kick off or if you want me to kick off. Um, it's up to you since you have a babe in your arms. Fine. He's just nursing for the 40th time today. Um, you can start if you want. Bye. Okay. Bye. So we wanted to talk all things Instagram because it's so relevant to what we do. And <clears throat> I let Instagram be like that thing, my frog, for a long time that I wasn't eating. For those of you who've read that PD book, Eat Your Frog, it's that thing that you should be doing like first and like get it over with. Um, <clears throat> maybe that's not the best analogy, but I I don't see myself as a creative person. So I had to get my, I had to get over that and go, okay, I can continue to say Instagram's not my jam. It's so much easier for me to work Facebook and ignore the fact that everybody in this network marketing world is saying Instagram is where you need to be right now. Or I can just get on board and I can learn and I can look up what I don't know and I can educate myself and ask questions and find whatever I need to find to try my best at Instagram. So I've been spending a lot of time doing that over the past year, I'd say. And while I don't feel like I'm an Instagram genius by any means, I do feel like I've picked up some things and that's what we want to talk about. Maggie did a great video into the team page. So it lives there. You can go find it last week about two apps called Captivate and Cleaner. Unfortunately, they are only on iPhones. They're not on Androids. Sorry. I wish that were not the case. So I'm not going to go over those, but I am going to give you guys a little bit of homework. If you have not watched that and you have an iPhone, go watch them because they will help you in expanding your network, um, which is vital for what we do. We well, I was going to say, even just Christine is up there in the corner. She just walked away, but like Maggie kind of trained Christine. And what did you go from? Girl, what was your what was your Instagram? Um, I was like at one sixty seven, and now I'm like at thirteen hundred. So, and that's not that long. Mm -mm. Like it's a couple been, months, like maybe six months, but I really didn't try in the beginning. Right, so you didn't really even put it into action right away. And Maggie, you were at like Hi. I was at like. I think probably four, around 400 or close to 400, um, and I just hit 2,000. In less than six, yeah, like right around six months. Yeah, yeah, I started in like uh, in August, August or September, one of those. We were doing a push group, and it was during that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very effective. So if you need to grow your Instagram, you need to go watch your training. 
And if you don't have an iPhone, um, one of the girls on my Team Cup team, there's an app called Follow Cop. I'll comment it in the Captivate training too. Um, but she is using it and she gained like a thousand or a hundred people in like a day or something. Oh, wow. Follow Cop? Is that what you said? And yes. Follow okay. Android. Yeah, she has wow. an Android. Great. Good to know. I need to know, know, the, need to know the name of that because. I haven't grown at all. I've been at like, I'll get to like 350 and then I'll go back down to like 319. <laughs> Are you, do you have an Android, Paula, or an iPhone? I have an iPhone. Okay, so you can use cleaners. So go watch Maggie's training when you get a chance. What is the name? Maggie. I'll tag you in the training. I'll tag okay. you. Yeah, if anybody else wants to be tagged in it, so you're not searching, you can go into Living Your Best Life team page and in the search bar, type Maggie. And it'll probably be one of the, her most recent posts because it was just last week. And can, we can, talk you, can you just pull that up into the whole Zoom so everybody that listens can get that if they're wondering? I'll tag you in it also. Or just, just in the whole, in the comments or something, in the Zoom call. Yeah, we can do that. Um, okay. So basically, we're, this call is not to talk about how to expand your network on Instagram. It's more the visual hashtags, things like that. But I will say there are three ways, and you need to pick one and be consistent with it to expand your network on Instagram, whether you're going a paid route, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, and I'm using a website called 21 Social. It is about $90 a month. So yes, I'm paying for followers. They niche it down to who you're looking for and basically they do the busy work for you. And that's the option that I'm choosing right now, completely up to you. Option two is what Maggie taught us about, which are the apps that are way cheaper. What is it, Maggie? Just real quick, like $5? It's like five to $7 per apps and there's two of them. So it's less than $20 for both for a lifetime. Yeah. And that is very similar. It'll you, it takes a little more legwork on your part, but that's the other option. The third option is to physically every single day, go and search for followers yourself using the five, three, one rule, which we've gone over on the last two calls. Um, or yeah, basically the five, three, one rule where you're looking for people. So enough about that. Um, it is vital though. So we want to really focus on hashtags and creating lists. So if you guys, I'm hoping all of you saw Kim's post about tonight's team call and she asked you guys to write down 10 things that describe you. It's a great place to start when you're trying to look for um, new followers and who are you trying to attract on Instagram? Who do you want on your team? Not just challenge groups. Who are you trying to help? And this serves two purposes. One is to expand your network because whether you're using a paid site or Captivate and Cleaner or doing the 531 rule, you have to know who you're looking for. How do we find those people? So you need hashtags and you also need hashtags to be putting into your posts so that you're attracting those people to you. It's not just about getting the followers, but them finding you through those hashtags. So a great way to do that is write down 10 things that describe you. Fitness and, you know, this coach life are two things, but that's a little blip in the radar. And honestly, I don't use any coach hashtags. I don't use girl boss. I don't use mom boss. I don't use you know, sometimes I'll use like mompreneur just like in the actual post, but I'm not really trying to find people through that because think about it. The only people who are using those sort of hashtags are us, our oils people, our Monat people. Like you don't, you really need to think about this hashtag describes what I'm talking about, but am I just going to attract 10,000 more coaches? Probably. So I don't use coach life. I don't use beach body, anything. Um, so think about that. So write down your list of 10 things, whether it's your, your faith, you know, you're a mom of four, you're um, a dog mom, you, so from those broader things that are, you know, very obvious about you down to the more specific things. The other thing I feel like is a little bit overused and a little bit, I mean, I feel like probably all of us on this call would say like the coffee ones and the wine ones. And I've tried that route too. I, me personally, I just feel like 
every woman these days talks about how much they love coffee and wine. So if you're going to use those hashtags as one of your things, really do your homework and go to those hashtags. Don't just put like coffee first on all of them. If coffee first hashtag has like 3 million things, because you're going to be a tiny blip on that radar way down low on the explore page. You're not going to get seen. So when you're looking for, you take your list of 10 things that describe you, then you go and look for hashtags that fit those things. So even little tweaks to the word like mama spelled M A M A versus mama with an O and two M's and an A, you'll see a different number of posts per that hashtag. So you want to look for hashtags that are anywhere from like 20 to 50,000 posts up to, I've heard a lot of different numbers. So I'm just going to say up to like 250,000. I wouldn't do more than that based on the current research I've done. And if anybody has heard anything different recently, please speak up. <laughs> because like I said, I've heard a lot of different things on that. But again, because you want it to be a more narrowed search you want you want the chance to maybe pop up on the explore page when somebody searches that hashtag and goes to that specific one and if there's three million you're not gonna touch it and um, that's like if you think about you know maybe you've been through something maybe you've had you know some sort of procedure or you've had some sort of ailment or like using that hashtag or you deal with depression or you know do, do your research in all of those, um, you know, maybe you really like hamsters. I'm just going out on a whim, but like, maybe you have a thing for farm animals, you know, like, because you live on a farm, whatever those are, and maybe like to knit or quilt or crochet or like, you want to attract people like you. So you want to find people who have similar issues as you've had, and you want to find people who have similar lifestyles as you have so that you can then find kind of that that person in there. Um, but then creating, once you have that, um, I just gave someone this homework just the other day was to take, you want to create a 30 stack of hashtags. I would say five of them when you say Andy, because yeah. you don't want to use the same set of hashtags for every Instagram post. You want to be, you want it like I save them in my phone. So I go to keyboards and I know I've gone over this and it's all back working again because they, this had like a glitch and was devastating to my productivity, but you would go under your phone and you would go to keyboard, uh, general and you would go to keyboard and you would go to text replacement and you can save five different sets. So I just save them as like I G H one, I G H two, I G H three, I G H four. And you could get real specific. You could do I G H food or I G H mom or I G H issue. And you know that those are like specific to whatever it is that you're talking about. If you wanted to be real specific, um, but have five of those, five sets of 30, because that's how many you can drop into your comments um, when once you post. And that, that's crucial. If you just post, your post isn't going to go anywhere. And no one's going to see it. But if, and, and if you're only using Beachbody hashtags, the only people who are going to see it are other Beachbody coaches. So you've got to do, your, this takes a little bit of time, but it is so worth the time. This is where you will find the people. Hey, Pam, yeah. created. Sorry. Um, do you think it makes more sense to have your, because I have the 30, I didn't have multiple sets, but I'll do that tonight. Do you think it makes more sense to have the hashtags relevant to what you're talking about? Or can they be like a mismatch of like 30 that all are relevant to you, but not necessarily what that post is about? Mine are all irrelevant. They all don't go together. I, okay. I think a, a person who had, I mean, maybe it would, it would be, I just don't know. I, I wouldn't even be able to test it. I have had somebody ask me once though, like, what does hashtag, I can't remember what it was. What does hashtag loneliness have anything to do with this post? Which was a great conversation. Right. Well, I was like, I was, I used to say I was the loneliest girl in the room. Like the, I'd be surrounded by people, but I was the loneliest girl in the room. That was like my favorite saying for basically a decade of my lifetime. And so you know, it gave me a top topic of conversation, but I've never had anybody else ask. So I don't think it matters. Um, and if they're all hashtags that describe you and somebody, you know, clicked on the hashtag, saw when your post and went to your profile, it would all make sense. 
it would all make sense. Yeah. In that regard. And once those lists are made, you guys, it then like the work's done, you're just going to copy and paste or use the keyboard every time you post and put that in there. So it just takes the legwork up front. And sometimes, you know, you'll, you might tweak them here and there. I tweak mine sometimes, or I'll see somebody else's post and I'll, I'll or I'll find a new one or whatever, and I'll replace one that I didn't like. So, but doing it initially is what's going to take the time. And then it's like, check it off your list. You're done for now. You know, and there is a website. Recommended hashtags. What'd you what's say? that? What are some of your recommended hashtags? They're going to be different for everybody. Um, so it's hard to say. I can share some that I use into the team page. Um, I, but they probably okay. need to be more specific to you on what works. And I would definitely, um, what's the website that generates a bunch for you? Does anybody remember it? I haven't used that in a long time. It's I really have helpful. had issues with having hashtags. I've actually had pretty good success with hashtags, but I know new members sometimes do. So it's, you know, we want to, we want to help um, influence some of the new members that might not know where to start. Yeah. Where to start. I will post them in the team page so you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about, which the ones that I've been using. Oh. And I'll find the, I'll find the website too. Um, because oh, I do feel like that I website is very helpful. And it's display um, purposes, right? Yes, there it is. Display purposes. So we'll put that in in under the the team call for notes. It's called display purposes. But you can put in there. You can put in like, you know, cat mom, and all the different hashtags that are going to populate for cat mom. So you don't, there is, there is some legwork already done. You don't have to, you know, take advantage of what's already out there. Don't like spend 14 hours on creating, you know, it starts pulling yes. relevant things and you can actually, instead of finishing your hashtag, you can click on what you're interested in. Yes. Yeah, you absolutely. And I would also stay away from fitness hashtags because they're just inundated, you guys. If they're not inundated with beach body people, it's it works. It's you know, all isogenics, it's all the fitness people. So, it's not going to serve you well to use those. Are there any questions about that stuff other than what we are going to post into the team page so you guys can visually see that stuff? All right. We were going to share some tips on um, just visually how you can help your Instagram. So when somebody goes to your your actual page or somebody sees your image and then they click over, you're going to have like a, a look to it, a same filter that you use every time, flow to it. Like if you see Kim's, she has all of her quotes lined up and then all of her pictures lined up. So what I recommend is going to pages that you are attracted to. You know, if you go into that explore page and you click on something and you go to somebody's page, what do you get lost in looking at visually? What sort of um, filter does that person have? What's their flow with their different images? And I want you to pay attention to that and create that for your own thing. So Yes, we want to talk about our workouts every day. And a lot of times we're taking that selfie and a lot of times we're pressed for time. So that selfie that goes into the challenge group ends up being the selfie that we use on our page. But on Instagram, it doesn't translate as well. So try to get creative with how are you snapping that post-workout photo? You know, sometimes it might be a selfie. Sometimes it's a close-up and you're, you have something, you know, that you powerful that you want to say. So you want that like dramatic effect up close. But then other days, you know, maybe you're doing one of the moves from, um, the program or you're stretching or, um, you know, what I do because I, again, I'm not creative. I go and look, what are other people doing? Oh, I could take a photo like that. And then I'll go take a photo like that. Sharing is caring. Look at how other people are doing things that you would look at and then want to read what they said and try that. I've been mixing things up with trying different backgrounds. I noticed what my eye is attracted to is accounts that are bright and light and white. So I tried to find a filter that fit that. And also I'm paying more attention to where am I taking my photos in my house, um, making sure there's a bright light in front of me working out at 5am, it's still dark out. So I literally move lamps around my house and 
position things so that I get that brightness. I happened to snap a photo in front of what Kim thought was my shower curtain, which I had totally laughed. It's just the curtain in my kitchen one morning after working out. And I thought, oh my gosh, the brightness worked so well from my ugly light in my kitchen up against that white. And because it caught her eye, I thought, hmm, I'm going to do that again. So I've done that a couple of times. And just having that brightness, I feel like helps a little bit. So think about those things when you're snapping those pictures. How can you change things up? How can you draw somebody in? I think too, if you go, you know, have, have, ask five of your best friends, like, Hey, cause I, I, I recently did this. Like, can you go to my Instagram and can you tell me, is it visually appealing? Am I, and one of the, one, someone's feedback was like, you are always, and I know you have a good, I know you're like obsessed because we take photos all the time together and I I don't like one of the sides of my face <laughs> in the photo. So it's always a good side, right? But then what does that look like in a photo? Like if you go down to Instagram, it's the same faced photo all looking the same direction. And that ends up not translating all that well because it doesn't really look that professional because it's the same exact photo, just a different attire or just a different whatever. So you have to, I think a lot of times you have to decide. I recently decided I'm no longer going to use my workout in my gym. That can't be my everyday because that is just getting old. It's not, it's not working anymore. It's not translating well. So where can I, what can I do differently? Can I go inside? Can I do in front of my mirror? And I'm like you, Andy, it's dark out. So it's like, where can I find light in this house? Bathrooms are great. Kitchens are great. Um, you know, you, sometimes you just, you need to get creative, but at the end of the day, if you ask somebody, Hey, can you tell me, is this visually appealing? And they say, I would probably leave. Well, okay. Take it with a grain of salt. Don't be offended. But what would you, how could I improve this? You know, oh, I, or what do you like to see? Ask five of your best friends what they like to see in Instagram. You know, you always make great meals. Well, share, you know, plan, plan accordingly. Every, every other post or every two days, I'm going to share what I'm eating for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, you know, definitely don't put Shakeology cups in your photos. Uh, keep, keep, I would say keep all branded stuff out of your photos if you can. Um, only because you want to have conversations with people. You want people to like what they see and reach out to you because they want to be a part of whatever it is that you're doing. And a lot of times, unfortunately, they instantly see Beachbody, they instantly see Shakeology, and they get turned off. So just take it out. Just take it out. It's so easy to take out. There's so many different cups in the world. There's so many different shirts. There's so many different whatevers, you know? We don't, we don't need to see... You know what I'm trying to say. But ask your people find what you like and then duplicate that how do you change your layout all the time so you just have to start posting the exact same order so i post the exact same order every single day i post something in the morning my middle day is always a quote and then my end day is another photo so oh. it always stays the same okay. so you always end up with a quote either in the middle or the center or the end or wherever it ends up going. Okay. Um, and that's the other thing is deciding how many posts a day you want. I know because I have a system, I have to post three, but not everybody wants to post. And Instagram doesn't necessarily, Facebook, you need to be posting three times a day. Nobody's going to see anything if you're not posting at least three times a day. Instagram okay. is different. Instagram is more of like a, a store. It's people want your, they want quality over quantity. They just want to see pretty things and that's it, I would say, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm a lot more likely to throw up a post on Facebook, whether it's something shared or a quote that isn't even my own or whatever, and then not share it on my Instagram if it doesn't feel like it fits the look I'm going for in my feed, honestly, because I've been watching all these other people and I'm like, well, that visually doesn't look right but on my Facebook it'll blow up so they are definitely different I definitely post more on my Facebook than on than I do on my Instagram 
things just don't translate the same. I'll have a post on Facebook that will get shared a ton of times and I'll have a ton of likes and then I'll go over to Instagram and it'll be like, wah, wah. So then I'm looking like, what was it about that post that did better here than there? And sometimes it's the opposite where I'll have something be super quiet on my Facebook, but then on Instagram, it worked well. Um, I've noticed on Instagram, it's so much more important to have that captivating caption I don't know if we're ready to move on to captions. I should ask before. Did you have anything else you want to say about images? Uh, no. I mean, aside from um, play with you, you know, play with your lighting, play with your, play with what you, what looks good. Play, you know, just play around, I think, with whatever it is that you're hoping to accomplish in your, in your Instagram and go from there. <laughs> And there's, once you make that list of 10 things that are about you and you're looking for those hashtags, it's going to spark ideas for what you can post about so that you're not just posting the same thing every day. Um, so when you're talking about the caption, same thing, I've noticed a huge difference. It's almost funny when I make a post because most of the time I'm copying and pasting to both platforms. I do not create different content. The only difference I do with Facebook and Instagram is some posts don't make it to Instagram, but I'll put them on Facebook. And Kim, I don't know if you do that a little bit differently. Um, no, I, every, I just copy and paste and go to from, yeah, I definitely don't let Instagram post to Facebook for me. Right. Because the, yeah, that messes up the algorithm. Yeah. I don't know why, even though they're owned by the same platform, it actually is really annoying to me, but that's okay. Because I don't really understand why it would be any different, but whatever. It is what it is. So in terms of captions, I've noticed that um, sometimes what I, and it's like I know before I even hit click, hit post, I know it's going to do better on Facebook versus Instagram. It's like I know more, I don't know why that is, but um, I've been doing a lot more research on, again, going to pages that draw me in visually, but what's drawing me in based on their caption? What's making me click that read more? And really paying attention to how are people wording that first two lines that you can see or three lines or whatever it is. You know, a lot of times it's a question and that's where I'm like, I'm not that creative with that. So I'll go and look and see how somebody did it and take their post and then make it my own. It's like, it gives me a framework for, I have something I want to say and it's not that, but this is giving me like the aesthetics of of how other people are doing it better than me, if that makes sense. So do that, you guys. I'm not saying go and steal content. I'm saying go to people who you feel like are doing it better than you and see how are they wording it. Why do you think that post got 4,000 likes? You know, probably because they have like 100,000 followers. But you get the point. Like some posts are going to blow up. And people have, you know, if people are doing something better than you, then pay attention to how they're doing it. Because I feel like I was in a rut of saying the same story over and over, which is what we need to do as coaches, but not tweaking the way that I was saying it. And I felt like I was falling on deaf ears. So I've been trying a lot harder to pay attention to how other people are saying it better. And so it's my story, it's my voice, but the the foundation, the, the framework, what is what I mean? The outline, that's what I'm trying to say. The outline of how they, tell that story is what I'm paying attention to to see okay I can plug my story into that the way that they they did a question here and then a little blurb here and then putting it you know to somebody else here I hope that makes sense I'm a little all over the place with that but um doing your homework with what you would be attracted to if you weren't a coach I feel like has been so helpful to me lately. Um, don't get in the headspace where you're going to go look at other coaches and then compare yourself and play that game because that does nobody any good. But you can go and look at a coach page, you know, take the top 10, go find a top 10 coach. Obviously it's very different, but they're doing something right. And don't follow Melanie Mitchell because she she is allowed to hold up her shake cup and talk about Shakeology because she's been the top 10 coach. So be careful there. If you do follow any of the top 10 coaches, they're going to post differently because they can't. That's just how it is. So find a coach that matches how you feel like your brand, you want your brand to look in a way and see how are they wording things? How does their page look? And to take it up a notch, go outside of coaching and find those pages that you're attracted to that fit your brand, that fit the people who you want to be attracted to. Look at who's following them. I've been going to pages 
that I'm attracted to. And then I click and I look at the people who are following them. It's all moms of multiple kids. I'm like, that is the exact person I'm trying to attract. Why are they following this person? What's drawing them in? What are their images looking like? How are they writing their captions? And then I'm trying to duplicate that for myself. So, you know, you guys, you don't have to, um, beat your head against a wall with Instagram. It takes time. Just what I, this is literally what I had to tell myself is just take it one day at a time rather than making it be this overwhelming thing that I'm never going to be able to do one post at a time, one day at a time, and just be open to tweaking things as you start to see the trend on what's working with your followers and what's not. And if it's not working, then don't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. If Does anybody not- have anything that they want to add about Instagram or anything? Do you need to come up with your own like slogan? No. 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 You can, but you don't have to. Okay. The nice thing about like your own hashtag or your own slogan that no one else has is if you do start to really accumulate people, they can go to that and see your other posts besides just your page. Yeah. That's a good point. So like, do you have your own website? A website. Yeah. Website is different than oh. I do, but you do not have to. I have a blog, but it really doesn't often relate to people, honestly. Sometimes it does, but not always. And sometimes the followers from that blog go to Beachbody, but not always. I'm currently in the process of redoing my website, but that's because I'm trying to grow organized chaos into something. But I unless you're like, you love blogging, it's not a necessary thing. Um, I think you'd be better off creating like a Google form that you put into your link tree, which we can go over. That's kind of a, an Instagram thing. Yeah. I was just thinking I want, I want to, um, in, in Instagram, if you go to your Instagram, um, at the top of, you can add a link and it's called link tree. And it's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. And you can set, it's free. It's, you don't have to pay any money. And you can put on there, um, you can link stuff. So you could say like, um, you know, I'm trying to think of what's on mine. Let's see here. Um, Actually, YouTube is a great source in using in Linktree. This is something I recently realized. I don't know why it took me so long. But like, let's say you said, join my next challenge group. You could link in there, uh, uh, the website to our info group. So for example, transform 20 VIP, you could have that in there, like join my next challenge group that would link right to that Facebook page. Or you could do a YouTube video where you're saying, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This is the group I'm belonging to. And that would tell them about it. And then in your YouTube video, you could link the Facebook link. Does that make sense? So the things that I have linked in mine are our current info group, which is Transform 20. I also have a link to follow me on Facebook, which yeah. I don't, that's kind of helpful with um, info groups and stuff, but anywho, and then a link to our sneak peek, since it's an ongoing sneak peek, then it's just always there. Um, so when I'm talking about coaching, I'll say, you know, click the link in bio, in my bio for coach sneak peek. Um, and I actually just created a Google form. So I have one that I just labeled my virtual boot camp or something like that. So they can fill out this little form and it's basically just asking them their name, email, if they're working with a coach already, blah, blah, blah. So, um, that's one thing that I've found that's definitely changed. When I say like, you know, comment below, I feel like that's just so played out. But when I say, click the link in my bio or, you know, fill out this application. I feel like that's translating better. Or even the other night I said, um, drop your email below or email me privately if you'd rather. And I got a lot of people who emailed me. I mean, 
I'm still in the phase of trying to get them to commit. <laughs> However, I was kind of surprised how many people actually emailed me. So play around with your calls to action too. Um, but the link tree is very user friendly to set up. If I can do it, you can do it. And it's nice that it's just there and it takes two seconds. Like when we have a new info group, it takes two seconds to go and copy that new link and throw it in there and it automatically updates your link tree. Andy, I just shared, um, if you want to put it in the comments only cause I'm on my phone, I'm on my, I know where I can't read. Oh, I see what you, you want to put that in the chat. Then people can check that out. Cause I just updated mine yesterday and I did it something a lot different than I've ever done before. And I, I think I'm a big fan. Pretty cool. You can check that out, but that's the one I put in my, um, well, now that I hit 10,000 followers, I can link that to everything, which is rad, but you can also put that in your link tree. Very cool. Um, and also Andy, you can put that PDF. They can put that in their link tree as well. Yeah. So we are, we, there's a PDF that I posted in the team page the other day that um, explains more about challenge groups. It's just, I feel like a more professional way to share information when people say they want more information. Um, and Shana graciously created it and we have been trying to tweak it so that it's different photos, but then we thought, you know what, it's a great document and neither of us have the time to tweak it. So we've been using it. So it's just a PDF with a link. Um, so check that out in the team page. I can link that here too, if I can find it. I'll send it to you. Okay. I'm, I set it up as um, they're all text sh shortcuts. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I have it just not on my computer. Super easy to. I mean, I'm sure I have it. Okay, there we go. But yeah, so like you don't, you, you could get away without having a website because you can do YouTube and YouTube is free. I don't even see where the link tree is on the Instagram. Are you on mine? On the Instagram, I don't even say where the link tree is. No, you don't go to you don't go to Instagram. You go to linktree.com. Okay. See, she, that's how illiterate I am. That's okay. That's she okay. put it in. She put it in the chat. Me too, girl. Me too. <laughs> I don't even know how to take the photo of the call <laughs> ever. It's bad. I'm that way. It's bad. So I have to Google it, or no? In the in the Zoom. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I know I've got that over here. Yeah. Okay, in the chat box, she you put the link tree in there, right? Yeah. So I just go to that. Yeah, it's a website. And then what do I do from there? Then you set up. You'll you'll see. It's um, I'm trying to think of how. Because I'm still trying to figure out how to work my Instagram on my computer instead of my phone. You can't. Instagram doesn't work from a computer. Okay, yeah. See, that's what I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm figuring that out now. <laughs> yes. Now you know. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't. Yeah. I didn't think it did. No, unfortunately, it just doesn't. Stories, um, it doesn't do none of that. Yeah, I know. If you have an <laughs> iCat, a iPad and a keyboard, that helps, but. Oh, yeah, right. iPad. And, yeah, that's true. I have two. Well, I have two iPads and I have a laptop and I have. You can do it from your iPad. So I, I can, but I, I can do it from my iPad. Instagram. Yeah, you can download as long as you have the Instagram app. Yeah. 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 I guess I can do it like that then. Mm hmm. I'm still trying to get the um, my web page set up on the Team Beachbody. I think that it's. I think there's an issue going on. I don't think that's you. I think it's it. I think it's just all over everybody. Okay. So don't take it personal. Okay. Give it a day. Because um, it just it won't even open up in Safari. It says you have to use Chrome. Yeah, I think something's going on. I don't know. We'll have to look into that one. Cause I somebody else posted that in the in the Diamond Squad page today, Andy. I don't know if you saw that. Mm -mm. But they were trying to change their profile or trying to change their website for Beachbody and it wasn't it wasn't saving. Hmm. 
I know there's certain things that I have to do on Chrome. I mean, I haven't tried to do anything with my website in a really long time, so that wouldn't be it. But um, I, so I just use Chrome for certain things. I don't know if you could download it, Paula, and see if that gets around it. Well, I mean, I have Chrome, but so I go to it, but it, it don't even. It, it still doesn't work. Right. Because whenever I go to save it, like to publish, um, like to publish it, it uh, says don't dismiss the page like to save everything like the um, languages for the different like the UK and stuff it won't it says don't dismiss the page we're um, blah 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 and then it just sits and it like doesn't go it won't yeah. it's probably just glitching I, it's not you it's them I'd say <laughs> they're probably working some things out I don't know I don't know if other good. people were having problems then I would give it till tomorrow and then try again okay yeah. I wouldn't mess with it anymore tonight. We'll probably have a notification in our back office tomorrow that they're working on it or something, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, and then the only other thing about Instagram would be stories. Just, you know, everything. Everything, 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 and anything. So I was talking to Shana. Um, for those of you who don't know Shana, she does a lot of her stuff with her own um, team now. So she doesn't typically get on our calls, but, um, I was talking to her today. She had somebody reach out through Instagram, through her stories and specifically say, I want to join your team because I love seeing what you do every day as a coach. I feel like I can do that. And Shane has been very diligent at using the success club tracker as just her way of making sure that she shows, I have it right here, her daily life, her workout clips, using the product, a healthy meal or her, her meal prepping every day, um, some sort of invitation, whether it's to the, her next group or coaching, and then some recognition, whether it's one of her coaches or one of her people. And to have somebody say that was directly why was kind of rad because that shows that that works. And we just talked all about the Success Club Tracker last week. So I was glad that she shared that with me today. Speaking of the Success Club Tracker, we added a uh, post that if you are going to be someone who uses it, you can count, you can check in there every single day. And if you wanted, say, an accountability partner in that, you could simply ask like, hey, can somebody call me out if they don't see my accountability tracker in here every day? Um, it's, I mean, guys, we know how accountability works. We see it firsthand in these challenge groups. If you want to grow your business, there's a tracker that is available to you every single day. Just do what's on that tracker. Do what's on that tracker. If you really wanted to grow, I mean, at the end of the day, it's up to you. You know, like what, what it is that you want has to drive what, what actions you take. But I think I kind of like it. Like I, I kind of like if, if, you know, if somebody needs an accountability partner and that I'm happy to tag you every, you know, every day. May you please. Got it. And it also having that checklist, it also takes away that feeling of like, there's always more you could or should be doing. Like do your checklist, commit to however many invites you put in that little box that says you invited however many people a day and just check it off by the end of the night. And then, you will see that ripple effect start to happen. Yeah, didn't I win the points the other day? In the challenge group, yeah, you did. What did I win? I think Andrew, Andy's gonna take tag you. She forgot. Yeah. She's gonna tag you with the picture. I'm excited. You can pick your prize. Cool. Does anyone else have any other things they want to? Maggie won too. Maggie won and Paula and Letty. And Letty was on this call too. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Three coaches are winning. Oops. <laughs> Over there. In the best example. Well, anyone else have anything to add or questions about anything before we? Um, if we. Um, Sign up coaches. If we get like two coaches to sign up underneath us, like, don't that do you like become an emerald coach? Yep. Yeah. And then what is the next step to become a diamond? So, diamond coach, you are going to sign eight total coaches. 
four on each leg. But don't worry about that part because they, beach body. Are you okay? What? You all right? Um, beach body pretty much makes sure, but then two of those coaches on each side need to become emeralds. Right. And then you're a diamond coach. Okay. Yeah. And we'll go over more of that. We'll, we'll, we'll go over lots of that, Paula. Um, once I, once I get you, one, you said you tried to download the new coach checklist and it wouldn't let you. Is it? I mean, it, I don't, all I got was just a blank form. I know it says, so you wanted us to put 10 for us to have 10 things for our, to write down our 10 things that. Yeah. Yeah. Described us. But when it says to download or save or open, there's nothing there on the document. On the about me one? I think you're thinking about the about me one. Both documents are blank. She's talking I'll, about the new units. Okay, I'll check those out and see what's going on. I previewed them when I uploaded them, but it's possible that no, and I also did as well, and I thought I got him, but it might be, we'll play with it. We'll see what's going on. And I could um, email them to you, Paula, and see if that works, too. That would be great. And I guess that's the other thing, too, is just, a, this is totally, you know, done, I guess we're done with Instagram, but um, Andy so graciously uploaded, basically, if you sign a coach, you can tag them in unit one, tag them, so-and-so, start here, and it will walk them through everything they need to know in the most simplest way. And that's what we tried to get, get into play, was let's do this in the simplest way. And it, at the end, it links them to the new coach training. So what we were finding was that the new coach training in itself seemed overwhelming for somebody just jumping in and starting. And the feedback I was getting from my new coaches was that they had to finish the training before they were doing anything. Before they were doing so people weren't becoming success starters because they were spending that whole first month just trying to learn and letting themselves feel overwhelmed. So this is action oriented. Do this before you move on. And as you do those things, you'll get your business going and then you can go into learning more because you know, we don't, we don't know it all. We still don't know it all. So there's no need to try to know it all before you start your business. So the hope is that it's so simple. When you sign somebody up, you can send them a quick text or email and say, welcome to the team. Here's the link to the team page. I'm going to tag you right here. So you know where to start. Yeah. Well, everybody, um, I have so many people that they want to know about it. They want information on it. And it's like, that's what I was trying to um, ask you, Kim, about is um, like, I wanted that link. I think she said it's um, bblinks.com. So that, like, I can tell them where to go. So like, I can show them challenge packs. So I can offer them challenge packs to sign up. Is that yes. right? where I can send them? I just found um, a really great resource today that explains how to go through share a cart. So Paula, I'll send you that. It's a quick video that teaches you about share a cart, which is very similar to BB Links. And also in the team page, I posted on Sunday, a video that I'm using now when people say that they're in interested in coaching. It's a really awesome video that walks them through what coaching is. So you can also snag that link out of the team page and be sending that to people who want more info. Okay. I need that, please. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, girls. And the one that she just shared too, the PDF is really great for people who want more info in the chat form. If you took that down, the chat form, is that going to be over here? Can I just click on them? Just yes. Click yeah. Yeah. Just open up all of those that she shared and then you'll be, they'll be in your computer and you can kind of go through them. But that's a great thing to share is that PDF. If somebody asks for more information, just send that. Okay. Yeah. And, um, so can I connect my Beachbody coach number 
So it's not going to send them, the PDF is not going to send them a link to anything that they're going to order. It's going to give them all the information. So oh. then hopefully they'll come back and they'll say, yay, I want to get such and such. Because the last page has a breakdown of a few different things, like the basic challenge pack, blah, blah, blah. Wow. So um, if you send that to somebody, check in a couple days later to see if they actually looked at it, what they want. And then you would use share a cart or BB links. Um, I personally use share a cart 99% of the time. I don't really use BB links. Um, and I don't ever use share cart. So you never use share? Never. Um, yeah, either, I mean, they're very similar. So it just depends on what you, yeah, I just find BB links is too easy, too fast. I like, I like it. But you can do both. You can do but when you're doing, to answer your question, I think, when you're using BB Links and or share a cart, it does link to you. So if they yes. click that and they order, it's going to be linked to you. you okay. Then you're good to yeah. go. All right. Cool. All right. Okay. Anybody Am else? The, questions? Am I the only new coach? <laughs> On the call? The yes. Call, like I'm the only that's okay we're, we're glad you're here we welcome all the questions and you literally just signed up yesterday so don't like you're you're asking advanced questions we'll get there <laughs> we'll, we'll get there and i feel like anytime you start anything new it all seems foreign right just like we started when you joined Beachbody, it was like, wait, you want me to work in my living room and you're going to send me a step and I'm going to drink this shake and I'm going to lose weight. It's the same thing, right? Like it, same as coaching. Like it's, it's, you got to learn, you got to learn how to ride the bike and then you get on the bike and you know how to do it and it becomes very natural and you'll find your own, your own pace and your own, you know, how you do things. And I mean, look at Andy and I, we clearly do things very differently and that's okay. Okay. They're, well, they're just like on the video, they're like, you need to do this in 30 minutes and you need to do this in the first 30 hours or you're not going to be a success. And I'm like, oh my Lord. Well, they put the pressure on you because unfortunately a lot of people sign up and they never do anything. And they, they just never, they never take the, you know, take advantage of what this opportunity is. So they do think that there is success in that first initial because it gives you that, because you have that excitement, right? But, um, you don't it really, if people are asking for information, let's just get your BB links figured out. I think that would be an asset to you. Share the PDF and the video for coaching. And I feel like the rest we can walk through as case to case, case by case, not case to case. Okay. But yeah. I think that would be perfect. Okay. All right. And then the last thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're, you're good. What were you going to ask? I was just going to say, just for clarification, the PDF we keep talking about is more information on challenge groups. If you haven't seen that, you want that, it's in the team page. The video we're talking about is more information about coaching. They're both third-party tools that we did not create, but they're excellent. And they're not branded to any specific team or coach or anything, which is great because we can all use them. Yeah. Awesome. Um, then the last thing, I think just to wrap us up, um, the transform 20, the next group is, is the info group. You guys can use that add oh, buddy boo. What is happening? right now? You can add people to that. Anybody who's interested in joining you for transform 20, add them to that group, add them to that group. And it starts next week. Prep week it starts. Prep week starts Monday. So technically someone could sign up as late as next Wednesday. Yeah. Day, as long as they don't mind that their stuff might be a smidge late. Are we running um, prep week in Facebook and then moving or are we, I forgot how you do it. Are you running prep week in? Oh the, yeah, we were going to move. We were going to try. I think we should try to move it to the app. I felt like we had a lot of people confused in the transform group and we still have people posting in the transform, the first transform group on Facebook and not the app, no matter how many times I comment, like, great. I'm so glad you did your workout today. Did you check into the app? So it's skewing people's points. You know, I feel like they're not getting the experience by doing that. And um, I've been bad about just being bold enough to say, stop doing that. So to avoid that, <laughs> We're going to start prep week in the app. I have a new girl and she's um, 
I just figured I'd, set, I'd start her just in that week and not the info, but she's already purchased. Oh, yeah. She's already purchased for sure. And it's going to be so nice to have all of that content since we're already doing transform whoever coaches it with us it'll be so nice to have all of that made that'll be done and easy um question about so i have a girl who's doing transform with us right now and she wants to do transform again immediately and then do lift so i told her she should finish this group out obviously and then either just jump into the next one and be it'll be one week behind and just jump at week two and keep going and then redo week one or she could, I don't know. What, what do you think? What should I, call? I, would, I would probably do that. Yeah. I would have her do that because then she's still with transform people and she won't feel behind because she'll, she's like a step ahead already. Yeah. I've already done it. Just and we just realized that night that we planned like what's to come, we left out. What are we going to do oh, for yeah. five weeks? Um, and we say all this we because we're having a lot of fun doing all this together. So I don't want anybody to feel like you have to run groups with us or you have to be doing what we're doing, but we just want to include anybody who wants to do this with us. So we were talking about coming up with a fun hybrid calendar that will run basically the last week of February all the way through March because April 1st is when we all talked about doing the 21 day fix live workouts that go into 21. Oh, there you go. Good job. And so on. So there's a lot. Um, we're going to, Kim, on Sundays, always updates in the team page, kind of what you could be inviting to for the week, what's coming up. So don't feel like you have to memorize all of that. I also created um, calendars, which now I feel like I never even shared on the team page. I'm sorry. Um, with all this stuff, because April 1st is also the day that Transform 20 is going to launch to everybody's Beach Body on Demand. So it would be great through the month of March to have conversations with your current BOD customers that it's coming, people who didn't get on Transform 20, that they'll need to get a step, but we will run another group for them. Um, and the hybrid that we were talking about, we were talking about sprinkling in a little bit of Transform 20. So if you sell a new Transform 20 pack, while we're doing that five weeks, they'll see a little bit of it. And then April 1st, they could do Transform 20 with all those other people. Well, we'll be doing 26 but and again i say we so that whoever wants to do that is more with than us one. but you yeah. certainly don't have to so are you two are you guys going to do transform again no i'm not planning on it because there's not enough time to do it again before all that 21 day fix stuff comes out I mean, no i mean february 11th like when we launch the round two are you guys going to continue doing transform or do something else while you Coach. I'm going to mix it up personally. Do I think we, didn't we talk about it last night? Are we going to do a little obsessed, a little bit obsessed? Yeah. We talked about making a hybrid of like a little bit obsessed, maybe transform. a little bit transform and a little bit of lift stuff. Just make a fun hybrid calendar. So we could market it as like our March group, you know, something March related. I don't know. That is not my forte, <laughs> but something like that so that you have something to be inviting to for those months. Um, does that make sense? Or for that month? Does that make sense? Yeah. So are you going to tell the group that you're not going to be posting transform? Like oh, yeah. So I'll just, yeah. Transform for the first time. Yeah. Or mostly for the first time. Yeah. So you'll just do something else. Yeah. I like so that I'll idea. I'll in there with my workout every day and I'll just let them know. I mean, that's what I did with Lift 4. I ran, I don't remember how many Lift 4 groups, but I, I only did it one time. I think it's too hard to try to, this is what we, I feel like we've tried to brainstorm. What does this look like? Cause we can't always be doing the same program that all of our people are doing, right. but I do feel like it's working well in tribe. I mean, everybody in tribe is like on different pages in terms of workouts. And I feel like that community is really thriving right now. So I'm trying not to worry too much about not doing, I don't know. Oh, not always doing the same thing that those but groups are doing. Can, impossible. If you want to do a second transform group, I'm sure other people, like we can post in the team page, who else wants to start another transform group and you can do it with those coaches because I know I want to start a transform group and I am not on this original start up. So. But we're starting another one February 11th. So Monday we start. Maybe. But that's, that would be round one of six and not round three of six. So, I mean, even if you, even if you start it with different people, it doesn't, I mean, Andy and Kim can still pop in or monitor it if 
That's the concern. I was just looking at it more from a standpoint of like Ugh. using our three week, like a lot of people are posting their three week um, yeah. pictures right now, which is why we thought about doing a round two, not so much in the perspective of me doing it again, if that makes okay. sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah. not, not from a standpoint of like right. monitoring it necessarily okay. for other coaches who want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I want everybody to coach it and do it how you want to. Does yeah, I, I was just wondering because I wasn't wanting to do it exactly all the way through again, but I did want to still mix in the cardio with some more lifting and kind of do a hybrid. I was just wondering if that's what you guys are going to oh, do. Oh gosh, you're getting so mad. That's kind of what we're thinking. Do you think yeah. that would be fun? Yeah, I think so. I miss the lifting. I really miss. Okay. Yeah, the lifting. And also I think sprinkling in some of autumn as those yeah. 26 ones are coming out would be especially because the whole new program the a little bit more obsessed came out since we've all been doing all these things so now we have another seven workouts to work with and then we're not committing to our workouts because I feel like it's really hard to say to people like hey come do another let's do 20 minutes and now we're doing an hour like that's a lot versus hey let's do a little bit more obsessed a little obsessed and some lift and let's do two Transform 20, you know, and even if we say, hey, let's do Transform 20 with added abs today, that's still only 30 minutes, you know, so I think that we yeah. can make up a really fun hybrid. Which and for our people who are finishing round one of Transform with us, they basically, they have a lot of options. They can go into Tribe. They can do this second round where they'll be a week behind, but if they're just like, I don't want to stop, then they can go into there. They can, Or they can do this hybrid with us and then if they wanted to do another round of transform after that, they could start April one again after this calendar. Sounds good. Lots of choices. All right. Well, let's, um, I have to take this baby. He's going to start getting mad at all of us. <laughs> Kelly is gas. So I'm going to do, I'm following your lead and Andy's lead and I'm doing whatever y'all doing. Cause it's, that sounds great. The hybrid calendar and I'm, I'm all for it. I love it. Uh, My body is totally changing. I love it. Okay. 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 I love that. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Yeah. Relax. Relax. Well, guys, thank you for hanging with us tonight. I'm loving these Tuesday night calls. I don't know if my husband's loving them, but no, mine neither. But that's okay. I got a little oh, this baby, a little sideways look, but so cute. He'll survive. Divided. All right. Well, let's take. Um, I'm going to stop recording. So for those that you watched, I hope that you got all that and find all the links. They can find links in the chat. No, huh? Oh. We'll post them in the once we post the page, the video. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna press.